Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry emphasizing God's unconditional love and grace. Today, join Andrew as he interviews David Barton and Pastor Mark Coward about Christians and politics. And now, here's Andrew. So, Mark, would you kind of explain how this school is going to work? Like, David is supplying a lot of the curriculum, and he's he, we're relying on him heavily. What's your part? How's the school well, practical? Well, I'm actually the director, and then, of course, we have Richard Harris as coordinator. And, and Richard uh, Harris was a lawyer, wasn't he? Yeah, he's still a practicing attorney. Oh, so anyway, he's a quality guy, and he's oh. going to be like your assistant or helping. Yeah, he is a treasure, and I couldn't do he what is. I'm doing without him. Richard is great. And, and I'm looking at the team that's put together, but... You know, it is the practical government school, so I'm directing that, but the emphasis on the practical side of it. And I just look at the relationships that are, we're going to have world class yeah. speakers yeah, coming right. in. It will be the most non politically correct mm -hmm. uh, courses you but can ever get. It will be do. the most historically and biblically correct courses you can get. Exactly. I'll tell you one thing that will happen to people when they start getting exposed to this, and there's quite a buzz around Karis Bible College and. Uh, it's gotten me so excited because when you discover our nation's founding, it will energize you. It will give you hope. It'll cause your faith to come up and go to a whole new level. And I, I've had a lot of members of our church disappointed. They came up after we had announced it. How can I get involved? Well, I said, you can enroll in Karis and complete two years and then come in your third year. But we lay the foundation, of course, with the yeah. first and second year, solid, solid word foundation. And I'm such a proponent of that because we learn a lot about you know our nation but we don't have the foundation to build on with the word but the third year practical government school there just won't be anything like it you know and probably the biggest thing when i came across david barton if it weren't for david i would know a thimbleful of what i know today because this is stuff that's not taught it's our forgotten and buried. In my opinion, which may not be right, you know, opinions are like noses. Everybody has one, usually has a couple of holes in it. <laughs> but in my opinion, I think David is the expert uh, on this, Without on a doubt. American history and original intent and all this kind Depends of stuff. Depends on who you ask. Ask the ACLU and, and, and those well, guys about I'm it. I'm talking no. about my opinion, yeah. which yeah, is, I believe, I a better opinion If you have a ACLU. biblical worldview, then probably this is going to be in your wheelhouse. If yeah. you are a progressive or a secularist, uh, there's nothing worse than me. Uh, that and I just... am glad to identify with you. Absolutely. And you have to be intellectually dishonest to refute when there's right. so much, you know, you're... Well, a... let, let me jump, because this is how bad it's gotten. As we deal with these kids, Tim, Tim was recently at a Christian school, and in the Christian school, the history course in the Christian school was teaching the pilgrims were not religious. They did not come to America for religious liberty. They came for gold, and they enslaved the Indians. That's all four dead lies. That's true. His, but that's in I a mean, Christian a school. <laughs> that's in a. That's not coming out of Harvard or Yale or Princeton. That is, that's not coming out of Berkeley. That's a Christian school. But the teacher was probably educated. That's through. it. That's exactly. And they didn't get this stuff here because there's um, there's a great story. There, there's a guy who was head of the ACLU in Louisiana, and we came out with the book Original Tent, which had I don't know 14, 1500, 1700 footnotes or whatever it was. And it was all back to original documents. He said, this guy's, Barton's crazy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to embarrass him. I'm going to show how wrong he is. And so he took that book and he started digging into it. And he's going to show that I misquoted. And got a letter from him later. And he said, you know, actually, there was a whole lot more back there than what you said there was. And as a result of getting into the actual documents, he became a Christian. He actually is a court of appeals judge now. And all that changed because he went back to the original documents. Well, back let's contrast this, David, because I learned this from you. There's a book called The Godless Constitution. I went out and bought it. And the reason is I had to read it for myself. It's, it's used in teaching. It's used across country. And courts quote it now. Courts, we have it quoted by courts to say, oh, uh, these two professors, Cornell, Kramer and Moore, said it's a godless constitution. Academics all agree that this was a secular... And what did they say in the back of that about footnotes? When they come to the footnote section, they say, we have dispensed with the usual scholarly apparatus of footnotes. Not a single footnote in the entire book. There's no way that they would let a freshman go through any of their colleges and do a research paper, any of their classes do a research paper without footnotes, but yet these academic, that's revisionism. We're, we're just gonna tell you, we're the professionals. You guys learn, don't think for yourself. You just learn, we're telling you. 
Now, uh, here's, here's the other side, because we, we get in these original documents. Richard put together the list of courses, and it's a great list. Uh, the stuff that we're going to cover at Karis is, is really cool. And the it's a little different from what other schools are, is you get four hours a day, and you go two weeks for a course. So you're going to have 40 hours of instruction time for that course, but you'll be done with it in two weeks. So in one year, that's how you get some 600 hours of instruction done in one year, which is like two to three years at uh, other colleges. So here, here's the names of the course. Each one lasts two weeks. Biblical Worldview One: The Seven Mountains of Influence, The Miracle of America, The Christian Heritage of American Government One, Getting Involved to Make a Difference, Government According to the Bible, Understanding Local Government, The Role of the Church and Pastors in Government, The United States Constitution Part One, Legislative Process, The Nation of Israel, Foreign Relations and Islamic Terrorism, The Faith of the Founders, Public Speaking and Debate, Biblical Free Enterprise, Maximum CEO, Bible Course One, Bible Course Two, uh, Understanding the Military, Biblical Worldview Two, U.S. Constitution Two, The Judiciary and the Courts. I've got Man. six more pages to go. I, this is good stuff, man. Well, I'm, I'm, it's good, but that's not an easy course. They're not it's easy gonna courses. It's going to be a lot of effort. It, it will, be, but kids will come out knowing how to. Kids, they may be 83 years old. Yeah, they'll right. come out being thinkers, and they will come out being capable of making an influence, even if it is just on one person that they talk to, like that farmer did with Davy Crockett, um, or if they want to run for office. You know, they're they're going to have a foundation by which they can articulate. And that's the other key thing is communication becomes key. You know, people look at congressmen and think, oh, congressmen, they know so much more. No, congressmen often know less than the average citizen. It's just that they communicate well. And if you're a good communicator, you can get elected if you're likable. Um, the number one factor in voting is likability. Now, how shallow is that? Yeah, you know, people, that's just, they look nice or they because nice. they're a woman or because they're black or because of whatever. That's prejudice. That, and it's, it's wrong thinking, but that's what progressives have done in education is we no longer use our brains like we used to. So what you have, grab this. The um, schools are so bad now that to exit from high school, or let me back up a step. If you've never been to the United States in your life, you lived in a cave at Antarctica somewhere, and you ended up here and you said, I really like this country. I want to live here. How do I live here? Well, you have to pass an immigration test. Okay, I'll do that. What is it? So you, you take a couple of courses, you go through a few weeks of school, and the immigration test is 100 questions. Now, if you can pass that, you can be a citizen of the United States, but that's the, you, if you don't know that much, you can't live here. 92% of immigrants pass that test. When high school kids were given the test, only 7% of high school kids passed that's the test. That's a shame. So kids who have lived here their whole life don't know as much as immigrants coming in. And so now some seven states have taken and made the immigration test the high school X exam, Arizona and other states. So you've got to at least know as much as an immigrant to, to get in. So in, in that framework of, of, of thinking and, and knowing to have a, having a minimum basis of knowledge, then as you apply that over to being a good citizen and you start knowing that, say going back to the congressman there only, they actually know less. What happened was the, the Intercollegiate Studies Institute, they took 13 of the easiest questions off those 100 questions, and they gave them to Americans who have lived here their whole life. And 71% of Americans could not answer the 13 easiest questions. But here's what they did. They also gave those 13 questions to elected officials. 78% of elected officials couldn't answer the 13 easy That's questions. Terrible. So 71% of citizens couldn't answer, but 78% of elected officials could. 48% of elected officials today cannot name the three branches of government. Now, if you can't name the three branches of government, you sure don't know how checks and balances work, and you don't know what you can do to get the courts under control. See, elected people don't know more than others. They just You know, on our July the 4th celebration, this year we had a real patriotic thing, but we also showed an interview where they were asking people questions. And these weren't just teenagers. These were 30, 40 year old people. That's right. And they asked them, says, what year did, I forget now, John Travolta and uh, somebody else sign the Declaration of De Independence? And they go, well, 19. Uh, they, it, it's unbelievable. It was embarrassing. I, I, I have, oh, Tim. <laughs> Tim, it speaks at these public schools all over the country and Christian schools too. 
and he, he's you know he's a lot younger than I am obviously and he's a millennial and he's this is your on, son for those he's up on know. all the culture stuff and so what he does is in the assemblies he he gets a gift card from something local all the kids like whatever it is the hotspot local he gets a gift card for it he says okay we're going to have a little competition here I've got a gift card we need two teams and we're going to have both teams and the individual answers the most right questions you get this gift card and so he'll um, he'll start popping up just flash up for half a second uh, a, a culture person a, a pop entertainer uh, an actor a, a movie or whatever and you know all the kids he gets four of them on each team up front so they're all vying for it and you know, and, and I mean, they'll get 90% of all the cultural questions. He'll, he'll play three seconds of a song and they'll name the song and he'll give a line out of a movie. And, and then he says, okay, now we're going old school. He puts up a picture of George Washington. Maybe one out of 10 kids knows that's, Washington. That's a shame. And, and, and it's funny because I've watched him do this. I, I'm sorry, one out of 10, 10 schools, not 10 kids. I've watched him do this and he says, okay, um, thank Dollar Bill. Nobody. Uh, oh thank Father of His Country. No, and, you know he he kind of, as he says, sarcasm's a love language for that that age group. You know he'll, he'll make fun of them, and and then he'll put up a picture of the Declaration of Independence, and nobody gets it. And, and so that gift card, it's maybe you can answer two questions out of out of ten historical questions today, and that's that's our schools, and that's what we're facing, and and that that again is why. The second part of the course is we're going to take you back into American history the way it really happened. So basically, our third year program is giving you the education you should have graduated mm -hmm. from high school. With. I want to say one thing. <clears throat> when you were reading this off, David, I think you said it best when you addressed, you made a video for us when we announced to the school that it was official and it was launched in 2016. You said it's rigorous, but I promise you this is not going to be difficult in the sense of having to force yourself to read and do all that. This stuff will set you on fire. Yeah, that's right. When I started really studying, and my journey, so to speak, started in 2008, and then I started doing a series every summer called America the Beautiful. It built my faith because, you know, Paul said, your faith is spoken of around the world. When you walk in true, genuine faith, that voice goes out in the realm of the Spirit. And these men, our founding father, George Washington, he walked in the supernatural. The bulletproof George the Washington. The bulletproof George Washington. Yeah. And that's not just hearsay, is oh, no. it? That is no, a verified fact. Supernaturally, right. God protected him. There would be no America without the Bible. There would be no America without men and women of God that really genuinely had a walk of the Spirit. I tell you, this stuff is going to set people on yeah. fire. It has yeah. set me on fire. Yes, it will be rigorous and it it will be challenging, but I promise you, it will not be something you have to force yourself to do. It, you can enjoy it because it's going to be all brand new information. I never knew that. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. I never saw the story about George Washington. I want well, not only is he bulletproof at Battle Monongah, hey, he's bulletproof at Battle Brandywine, and, and you start saying, man, I want to see some more. And it's this thing where it's like you get hooked on a TV series and you got to see every episode. It's going to be just like that. You're really, you're exactly right, Mark. People are going to get into this, and it will be self-energizing because this will be brand Absolutely. new revelation. It'll be brand new information. Well, you know, we're offering all kinds of products. I've got these products that I produced that I call Christian philosophy. And uh, anyway, I won't take a lot of time, but I've got CDs, DVDs, a book. The first half of it is all. Um, biblical things about how you should think about who Jesus is and different things like that. But the second half is all applying, how should a Christian think? What should our philosophy be towards social issues? And I specifically deal with evolution and homosexuality and abortion. And so this is like a research thing and it has uh, statements from the gay and lesbian uh, website and uses their uh, information. So anyway, this is what we're offering. And then we're offering David's uh, Founders Bible that Mark was talking about that is the uh, actual text of the Bible, but it's got the Founding Fathers commentaries on it in a sense. It's, it's a commentary written by the Founding Fathers. And then um, uh, uh, Mark has this conference entitled Breaking the Silence, and you started it last year, I believe. Mm -hmm. This year, I'm going to be speaking at it. Are you speaking yes, sir, at that? David. So all of us are going to be at that. And uh, tell them just a little bit about who else is going to be speaking, what this oh, is all Oh, my goodness. About. General Jerry Boykin will be there. Kamal Salim, a former jihadist, to give us insight. William Federer, um, 
Now, you, need, you might ought to explain a little bit who all these people are. Oh my gosh, it, it is a lineup that amazes me. Uh, I know you and Bill are friends, and Bill has quite a historical grasp on the country. General Jerry Boykin, he was one of the original Delta members and gave almost 37 years of his life in the military. And God has raised him up just to have an insight on how our military needs strengthening and and, and he particularly understands the threat of Islam. Uh, John Guandola. Uh, for just a second, let me go back. Jerry Boykin just as recently was fired from his position at what? Sid Sydney Hampton College. And he was reinstated a couple of days later, but he was fired over what? Well, basically he made a statement that, you know, if someone is in the restroom that gets confused on their gender that after if his daughter granddaughter or wife was in there they won't need surgery after he's done and so you know and, and, I think and that's awesome. Way, <laughs> I, I gotta say Jerry is is one of the coolest guys out there three-star general uh, was um, in the CIA was intelligence guy Black was Hawk Down Black yeah Black Hawk Down the movie um, you know all that kind of all these movies we've seen he's been so much in, involved in that and so he first gets chased out of the military because he's an outspoken Christian. He talks about Christ, and we can't have that in the military, so they chase him out. Then he, um, he recently was not allowed. He was doing the, the prayer, National Day Prayer Breakfast at Fort Riley, and yeah. one guy complained and said, whoa, he's, he's anti-jihadist, and, and he thinks marriage is a man and a woman, and he's an outspoken Christian. We can't have him speak at a prayer breakfast, and so Fort Riley retracted the invitation to him. He gets beat up all, this is a guy with backbone. You know, he's been shot through the arm with machine guns calibers. and, you know, wow. mortars going off beside him. And he just has got more back. True American hero. He's a true American hero. His books are killer books. If you've never heard Jerry, it's, it's like listening to a modern George Washington. And you know what he says, because we have him every year at least, but he spoke and he'll be, and he was there this year too. Uh, he pulls out a constitution, copy of the constitution, and he reads it regularly. But he said, you know, I swore an oath to defend this constitution. And he said, there was no expiration date on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm still wanting to do that today. People love General Boykin mm -hmm. and uh, a true- no, That's what we're doing through this practical government school is defending the constitution. And we he will be one of the guys that come in to teach courses. Oh, Jerry, that's awesome. Jerry will be one of the guys to share because nobody's gonna tell you more about Islamic, what's going on in the Islamic world than the guy who was heading the intelligence for it then that and the military, how it operates, what to do with the military, because that's always a political issue is what you do with the military things. Um, so Jerry's one of the guys who'll actually be part of Bible college. So part of this breaking the silence, you're specifically directing it towards Christians and towards, towards ministers about how that we've just got to start taking a stand. We've got to speak up. You know, from General Boykin, you know, he was reinstated in the college my understanding is because the students were so upset because they he was one of their favorites. He was that, the favorite guy. The, and favorite they guy. spoke up and That's all of a sudden good. things changed. Which shows that if Christians would just stand up. Stand up, up and, and, and speak we, up. You know, we outnumber the opposition 15 to one at least, and yet we just are silent. You know, one other is Kamal Salim and Kamal and General Boykin oh, speak wow. a lot together. Yeah. And if you talk about two guys, had they met in their previous lives, they'd have killed each other. That's right. But Kamal, raised in a large Sunni Muslim family in, um, in Lebanon, his mother was telling him from the time he was four years old, your, your destiny, Kamal, is to die killing Christians and Jews for Allah. And you know, Kamal was a member of our church probably 18, 20 years. You know, I dedicated their little daughter and just married her here a couple of years ago. But anyway, Kamal gave me more understanding. I couldn't couldn't c calculate why do Islam why do Islamists hate us so much? Mm -hmm. He's he loves the Muslim people, but he's a born again Christian, and he's ever pastor's dream for a church member. Loves God with all his heart, and he travels. He'll be one of the speakers at the school, and he will give. He's one of the favorites. Uh, he really ranked uh, the highest in our last little survey from last year, 2015's breaking the silence. But you know, people just want to hear the truth. That's they right. want to know the truth. That's right. And just because we disagree with somebody doesn't mean we hate them, you know. Mm -hmm. So Kamal will be one of those. We'll have Alex McFarland who has a 
he teaches on worldview. He'll be teaching in the school on Christian worldview, and he's an apologist, a dear friend of mine. We've got a lineup that'll kind of blow your mind, actually. And of course, y'all are both speaking there. It's going to be, we're going to have dramatic presentation in that too. We have. So by the time that these programs air, I think it's going to be aired in October 2016. This is going to be over this year's conference, but uh, you're offering what? On, um, is it on DVD C- and or CD? Yeah, everything will be edited by the time this airs and, and people can get hold of it. So anyway, these programs and the things that we've been discussing, there is all kinds of resource. We've got David Barton. Of course, you got a, I I don't even know how many products you have available through your ministry, but I've seen bunches of them. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably in the hundreds, I would yeah. guess, yeah. And so anyway, we've got a lot of things available. And I'm just praying that the things that we've talked about, you know, this has been fun. I've enjoyed doing this and just talking with you guys, but this has the potential of changing people's lives yeah. that are watching this yeah. because they do not know the truth. And you know, Andrew, people need to understand we change the world one person at a time. Mm-hmm. And if we'll just open up and begin to speak to one person, we can change this country and take it back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, I believe that one of the reasons that the church is in the mess it's in is because our emphasis has been on converts instead of disciples. Bingo. Jesus told us to make disciples. That's right. And so what we're doing You know, it's not just to inspire you and say, oh, there's hope for America so that you can feel good for the next five minutes. We're trying to actually educate people, make disciples who can go out and teach other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe it's going to be effective, guys. I believe it's going to be awesome. So our announcer will give a lot more information about this, but I encourage you, you can go to our website and you can look at these programs again, but please get these materials. Mine is a lot of uh, scriptural teaching and stuff on just how Christians need to take a stand. And I only focus on three areas, but of course these guys and these conferences that we're offering, it will deal with so much more. And I guarantee you, this could keep you busy probably for the next five or 10 years, just getting the stuff that we're offering right here. And it would be a real blessing to you. So pray for us and pray for this practical government school. Because as David said, I believe this is really unique. And uh, we're in a sense building something from the ground up. We're in a sense, we're like the founding fathers. Mm -hmm. We're, it's an experiment and we're Mm -hmm. doing this, but man, America has been a great experiment that's worked really good. And I believe that this is a God inspired thing. And I just want to say thanks to both of you. So we want to share this. Please share this with other people. You can send them to our website. They can watch these programs. They'll be archived there. You can get all of these materials and you can come and be a part of Karis Bible College. And so again, let me just say thanks to you guys. This has been awesome. And I appreciate thanks you. Thanks for your leadership. Good. Thanks for being willing to do something brand new and creative. It's a new thing the Lord's doing. And thank you for your willingness and leadership to do that. I, I believe it's a God amen idea. to that. Thank so you. So thank Andrew. you guys. And we love you all. And we believe that praise God, our nation is not beyond reach. Man, we are believing for a turnaround. And even if we lost, I'm going to die fighting. Oh, that's right. Uh, but I am not going to give up. Don't goof up and be uninvolved in this election. We're that's weeks right. away from an election. Well, I mean, it's short time. You got no options. There is no excuse. You can't stand before God and say, here's my reason that I didn't vote. He's not going to buy it. Uh, and you got to be part you of it. You got to vote. It's you not an vote. option. Not Just an option. You have to choose who you're going to vote for. And you need to vote for the one who will forward godly principles the most because righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So God bless you and listen to our announcer and he'll give you all this information. On today's program, you saw a portion of Andrew's interview with David Barton and Pastor Mark Cowart. If you'd like to receive the complete two hour interview, you can get it in its entirety on CD or DVD for a gift of any amount, or you can become more informed take a stand and make a difference in today's culture when you get the Christians and Politics package. This package includes Andrew's interview with David Barton and Pastor Mark Cowart, Andrew's book titled Christian Philosophy, the Christian philosophy teaching on either CD or DVD, and the entire Breaking the Silence conference on CD or DVD that features a powerful lineup of speakers. You'll learn about America's godly heritage, have a better understanding of God's plan for America, and gain tangible things you can do to make a difference. 
This package also includes David Barton's Founder's Bible, which includes over 150 biographies from America's historical figures such as George Washington, John Adams, and Dr. Benjamin Rush. It's filled with insightful quotes about the use and impact of the Bible from American founding fathers and statesmen across the generations. The Christians and Politics Package has a catalog value of $206 but you can get it today for just $159. You can order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today.